So why is potassium the most important electrolyte? That's the question for today. Well, let's just take a look at four main electrolytes. We have K+, which is the chemical symbol for potassium. We need 4,700 milligrams. Then we have sodium, which is Na+, 1,500 to 2,300 milligrams. Then we have calcium, Ca, we need 1,000 milligrams. And then magnesium, we only need 420 milligrams. So we can see that we need 10 times as much potassium than we do magnesium. And then with sodium, we need twice as much potassium. And then with calcium, we need four times as much. So why do we need so much potassium? Well, first of all, what is an electrolyte? An electrolyte is an electrically charged mineral. When you take an electrolyte and you put it in water, it separates and becomes conductive to electricity. So our bodies use electrolytes for various things, to help conduct nerve impulses, to help you contract and relax muscles, to help maintain pH in the body, as well as to help push fluid through the body. 30% of all the energy in our body comes from this little pump called the sodium potassium pump. But I do have to say that the definition for pump is slightly different than the pump that you probably have down in your basement is the sump pump. This is a biological definition. It means the mechanism for movement of electrolytes through the cell membrane, okay? So that's a little bit different than just a pump pushing fluid somewhere. So 30% of all the energy that you have, whether it's digesting or thinking, etc., 30% of all that energy comes from this sodium potassium pump. So the purpose of this pump is to basically keep sodium out and keep potassium in. So it's keeping these two minerals separated. Okay, that's the purpose of this pump. Anytime you have two different minerals which are electrically charged in a different way, okay, you form a battery. So with a battery, you have a positive and a negative. There's a difference in this electrical charge and that allows for energy to be maintained. So the purpose of this pump is to maintain cellular energy. So your cells are basically batteries and the battery is there to help generate nerve impulses which happen to be connected to muscles. So it's activating the muscles. You have electrical impulses that are actually changing the muscle rhythm. Then we need energy to have the muscles contract and relax and help regulate the pH of the body. And one purpose of that is to allow enzymes to work. So for example, there are certain enzymes that actually work in different pHs. So if your digestive system is the wrong pH, that enzyme won't work. Let's take the stomach for example. You have this extremely powerful protein enzyme called peptase, right? And that enzyme is activated when the stomach reaches a certain pH level. If the stomach never reaches that pH level, and then the enzyme never becomes activated, and then you don't digest protein. So the pH is very, very important. And the stomach is greatly dependent on potassium for its pH and its ability to digest protein. All right, and then we have fluid balance. If you don't have enough potassium, guess what? Your ankles are going to swell up with fluid. Sometimes when you see people with sandals, they have this these indentations around the sandals where they have this all this puffy fluid. And I just want to walk up to them and tell them, just take some potassium. All that fluid will completely go away, probably within a few hours. But I have to withhold myself from doing that because uh, sometimes people consider that rude. All right, so what does potassium do? Well, it keeps us energetic, okay? It gives us endurance when we exercise. If you're low in potassium, you will not be able to go as far when you exercise. It also prevents cramping, like the cramps that you get in your calves or your feet. Now, it could also be magnesium as well. Also, potassium is necessary to prevent arrhythmias, okay, it's, which is part of the pacemaker of your heart. It also helps prevent twitching, tremors, constipation, because you have this, it's called peristalsis, this pumping action through your colon, which is controlled by the nervous system and the muscular system. So without potassium, you don't get this pumping action through the colon and things just kind of sit there. Also, potassium is necessary to prevent vascular calcification. So potassium is definitely needed in the regulation of calcium. Now, without potassium, you get insomnia, you can't sleep. So potassium is a physiological tranquilizer. It relaxes the body much like 
magnesium does. So let's just say, for example, you're deficient in potassium for some reason. You're going to lay there on the pillow and try to get to sleep, but your heart's going to be pounding faster. You're going to feel your muscles more tense. You're not going to be able to get into that relaxed state. All right, the next thing is insulin resistance. I have a lot of videos on this topic. Potassium is needed to prevent insulin resistance. In fact, if you take a diabetic or a pre-diabetic or someone with insulin resistance, they're always deficient in potassium. So potassium will help your blood sugars. It will help lessen this insulin resistance. And insulin in the cell allows certain nutrients to go inside and fuel. So anything that inhibits this insulin function stops the absorption of nutrients and fuel into the cells. So this is just another reason why potassium is important in blood sugars. Now, you also have stored glucose. That's called glycogen. Glycogen is a string of glucose molecules, which also have with it a string of potassium molecules. So in order for glucose to be stored in the liver and the muscle, you also need potassium. And without that potassium, you don't store glycogen as well. And so if you don't store glycogen, the body then starts storing more fat instead of stored sugar. And so potassium is involved in a lot of different aspects of your blood sugars. When you go on the ketogenic diet, the requirement for this glycogen goes down. So you're not going to need to store as much glycogen. The same thing goes with when you do intermittent fasting. So you're not eating. So your body is then running on ketones. So you're not running on glucose. So you don't need as much of this. So this kind of goes away. So you're basically burning it up and it's not replaced as much, especially in your liver after about one to two days. And so what happens is you're going to lose a lot of glycogen, glucose, and you're also going to lose potassium. This is why when you start on the ketogenic diet, you need to take a potassium supplement. I always recommend one in electrolytes so you have all of them, not just potassium. All right, the next thing that potassium does is it helps to prevent high blood pressure. If someone has high blood pressure, the easiest thing to do is just to increase the potassium in their body and it usually will come down. The other cause of high blood pressure is low vitamin D. And then a lot of times people will say, well, wait a second, I thought high blood pressure was caused by high sodium, okay? Well, you need sodium and potassium in the right ratios. So instead of lowering sodium, which by the way, you need a certain amount of sodium for a lot of reasons, why not increase potassium? Because yes, you might have too much sodium, but in reality, you just don't have enough potassium to deal with that sodium. So these people that are salt sensitive usually are just potassium deficient. All right, and another uh, common myth that I've heard is that you don't wanna take potassium because it's very toxic to the kidney. That's false information. In fact, potassium protects your kidneys unless you have stage five kidney failure, in which case you have to avoid a lot of different nutrients. But if you don't have end-stage kidney failure, potassium is actually beneficial for the kidneys. And I'm going to put a link down below for those people who have not heard that information before. In fact, potassium citrate is good for preventing kidney stones. It's also good to prevent gout, which is uric acid crystals. So potassium is actually very, very good for a lot of different things. Now, I already mentioned this. It prevents edema, okay, swelling. If you have swelling, usually you have an imbalance of too much sodium and not enough potassium. When you take sufficient potassium, it's like a diuretic. If you have fluid retention, you will get rid of that excess fluid. All right, I already mentioned this. Potassium counters sodium toxicity. Also, I already mentioned that it helps you make stomach acid. And I also mentioned it helps prevent gout because potassium citrate is alkaline. And if you keep the, the pH correct and don't allow your pH to become too acidic, you won't have these uric acid crystals coming out of solution, aggravating your big toe joint. All right. So now the question is, why are we deficient in potassium? Well, the number one reason is because of the diet. The average person only consumes about a cup and a half of vegetables every single day. Okay. A cup and a half. Well, where in food would you get a lot of rich potassium? bananas, right? Well, in a banana, it's only 300 milligrams. We need 4,700 milligrams. So if we do the math, 
you would need 15.6 bananas per day to reach your 4,700 requirement. Now, the problem with bananas is they come with too much sugar. So bananas are not the best source. The best source would be leafy greens, okay? But yes, you would need at least seven to 10 cups to contribute to this amount, but realize also other food will contribute. So it's not just the salad. There's even potassium in certain things like salmon, for example. And there's potassium in nuts and seeds and nut butters. And so there's other sources of potassium, but the leafy greens have a good amount. And it's fairly easy to eat big salads. Now, when I say one cup, I'm talking about like a small handful, which is like one ounce. So you'd need like a bowl of salad. You could do one for your lunch, and then you can do one for your dinner to make it really easy. But I did a video on showing you the amount, so I, I will put that link down below. Now, avocados are loaded with potassium. One avocado is roughly about 700, sometimes 800 milligrams of potassium. So avocados are really good. Now, I don't recommend going out and getting a potassium supplement unless there's a higher amount of potassium like an electrolyte powder, because Typically, the supplements for potassium only come in 99 milligrams, okay? So you would need like what, 47 pills every single day and that's not very practical. So I recommend you try as much as you can to get it from your diet or get a good electrolyte powder that has enough of these electrolytes. Number two, if you are vomiting, you're gonna lose your potassium. If you have diarrhea, you can lose your potassium. Diuretics are notorious for becoming potassium deficient. I mean, it's kind of wild that you're here you are taking a drug for your high blood pressure when that is going to deplete your potassium and create a higher amount of blood pressure. Doesn't make sense to me. Okay, stress. When you have stress, you deplete your potassium reserves. And by the way, when you actually take potassium, it relaxes your nervous system. It pulls you out of this stress state. Sugar depletes your potassium. Real quick, I have to tell this story. My wife and I, years ago, right, right before we were getting married, we went to shop around for um, wedding cakes, okay? And we were sampling wedding cakes and we we're eating sugar all day. This is before I had any awareness on healthy foods at all. So we ended up uh, that night at an Italian restaurant and we had pasta, pizza, we had bread, we had wine. We were carved out, right? And then we look up and everyone was gone in the restaurant except us. And there, except another guy was going past us with the dessert trays, all the different desserts. They, they were actually gonna toss them. And uh, he wanted to know if we wanted to sample some before he tossed them. And of course, I don't like to see food go to waste. So I started to dive in and started consuming as much additional dessert as I can cram into my mouth. Now, as I was driving home that night, I remember I feeling kind of weird. So I got home and went to bed, tried to go to bed, and I started to hear my, this pounding in my ear, just like boom, 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 going, what is going on? I had no idea. That was a severe potassium deficiency caused by consuming a tremendous amount of refined grains and sugar, okay? So all this refined grain and sugar literally depletes you of potassium and starts to accelerate the heart rate. My heart rate was literally going so high, it, my heart was pounding out of my chest, okay? I didn't sleep one minute. If I would have known what I know now back then, I would have just either took some potassium or had a big salad to try to replenish some of this lost potassium. Perfect example of low potassium. All right, when you do keto, you need to take potassium because you're gonna lose fluid, which you're gonna then lose potassium. When you drink alcohol, you can deplete your body of potassium. When you consume excessive fluids, so some people drink gallons of fluid while they're working out and they're sweating too, and they're losing not just their sodium electrolyte, they're also losing their potassium. So they're gonna become very dehydrated and feel dizzy and weak. And so um, when you drink gallons of water, you better be drinking your electrolytes at the same time, but not just potassium, sodium too. And I mentioned the sweating right here. Okay, diabetes. Diabetics need or require more potassium. And they're usually always deficient in potassium because of this insulin resistance thing. So potassium is very, very important for diabetics, especially. 
yet they're just retaining sodium like crazy in fluid without the potassium. All right, and then we have fasting. Now, the thing about fasting is when you're fasting, especially prolonged fasting, sometimes uh, you're not able to store some of these electrolytes for a long period of time. So if you're deficient, you know, whether it's magnesium or potassium going into a fast and you're not consuming anything, no electrolytes, then it's exaggerated. You can feel dizzy, you could pass out. So this is why when you fast, I recommend taking electrolytes. All right, so now that you know about potassium, let's show you the video that I mentioned about consuming enough salad. I put it right here, check it out. <laughs> 